Welcome to another Cement Raw video everybody. Today, I'm gonna to be telling you how to not get scammed or taken advantage of fake importers or exporters out of Japan. So if you wanna purchase your dream Japanese import car, this is the video for you. It's gonna be a lot of talking, a lot of information, but it's gonna stop you from pretty much losing any money or losing your car, or both at the same time. I'm not joking, it's already happened. So the first thing that you wanna know is everyone wants these cars. This is uh, actually an R33 Skyline with a 34 front end. If you're interested in that and the build that we're doing on any of these cars, go check out the main channel um, and subscribe, comment, like, all that stuff. It's good for the algorithm. Also, this channel, um, we're getting 100K by the end of this year, so if you haven't subbed yet, sub. This is some really insider information, and I assume that a lot of importers and exporters are gonna be very upset that I'm sharing this with you, but if you do your research, you can find this readily available anywhere, and it's actually very basic stuff. No one's really made a video explaining this whole process, how exporters make their money here in Japan, and how the whole process looks, and how to make sure that you don't get taken advantage of. So, first thing is, we have these cars, and they are in high demand right now. 25 years old, and everyone in the USA just wants their dream Fast and Furious car. Let's just say it as it is. That's how it is. We've all grown up with, you know, all these awesome games and all that kind of stuff, like PlayStation 2 era and all that type of thing, Need for Speed, Fast and Furious movies and all that stuff, and everyone in America wasn't able to get them. I was fortunate enough to live in Australia. We grew up with these. Skylines are just like, eh, it is what it is. We had the RB30 VL Commodore for crying out loud. So like, I'm used to these cars, but a lot of people in America aren't. They've been deprived of them for 25 years and all of a sudden, the doors have opened, the floodgates opened, and everyone wants them. Biggest issue is these cars are 25 to 30 years old and they were absolutely worth nothing here. When I first moved here, you could get a really low kilometer, like 40,000 kilometers, 60,000 kilometer, 32 GTR for five to six grand. I'm not joking. Like even less, you could probably pick one up for four grand. That's how cheap these cars were. So they were not looked after well. People that were car enthusiasts and loved their cars and actually loved what they were about, looked after them and kept them inside. Everyone else parked them outside. The weather in Japan is crazy harsh. Obviously winters, snow, salt on the roads, depending on where you are in Japan. A lot of these cars sat outside and it was more expensive to get rid of them than to sell them. That's how cheap these things were. So they just sat there. And that's why you're seeing a lot of cars come through auctions with a quick respray, or they just look a little nicer, cut and polished and stuff, but underneath they're rotted and they're covered up with putty and all that type of thing, right? Because people are just going around, leaving slips on people's cars saying, hey, I'll buy this car, I'll take it off your hands. They don't know the cars are worth money anymore. They've been sitting there for 10 years and they just get kind of glammed up for a quick sale. We've already seen it happen on the main channel to actually the person who's holding the camera, my good friend Enzo. Um, he got taken advantage and unfortunately wasn't able to check out the car enough on an RX-7 FD. And um, it was one of those exact same cars and it was in terrible condition underneath. Uh, that's one thing to keep out for. Everything in the auctions as well has changed over time. A grade 4.5 back 10 years ago is very different to what a 4.5 is now. I know a lot of people are probably gonna get angry about me saying this, but it is true and you're lying to yourself. Anyone that says that the quality of cars hasn't changed or anything like that, or says that the market's not gonna pop, they generally are people that are selling these cars and have something to gain for it. I think anyone who's very honest in this business and in this industry knows that there's a time limit and it's about to expire. Once the 34s are done, there's really no other more cars that people wanna export like this whole rush and this bubble. Soon, I think we're gonna see a big change in the market, a big change in the industry and everything like that with exporting cars. And this kind of moves into the next Next step. When there was a huge demand for these cars, all of a sudden, people were making a lot of money here. People were going around buying these cars that were left in outside car parks with grass and trees growing over them, whatever you want to call it, or just, you know, inside, even in people's garages and stuff, people didn't even know what they were worth. They were going around and buying all these cars for five grand a pop, and let's just say they were selling them for 50. That's how much the market skyrocketed. It was like overnight, boom, these cars were worth big money. So what does that mean? Well, it's the same thing that happens when a Taylor Swift concert is coming to town, guys. Scalpers, scalpers buy all the tickets and then they go, ha ha, all you Swifties, you wanna be able to see your favorite person perform, right? You wanna see Taylor Swift. So what do they do? I bought these tickets for 50 bucks a pop, but I'm selling it to you for $500 a pop. Scalpers, opportunists, um, graphics cards. Hey, look at this, it's raining. 
Um, we might need to actually go upstairs if it gets any louder because the roof's not well insulated here. But let's keep going, right? So scalpers, opportunists, you know, even scammers, people taking advantage of people. And while business is business, and I understand that, being a scalper, nobody likes. And unfortunately, that is a big issue with car, like imports and exporting cars out of Japan. Let's call them fake exporters. Fake exporters come to Japan with the sole purpose of flipping cars. You can do that, that's fine, but you have to do things properly. Let's take a break. That's a lot of talking all of a sudden. Now, obviously there's a big difference between what we know as a car flipper compared to someone that is a real established car dealer, exporter, importer, right? It's a big difference there. Official business and someone that flips cars on the side for a bit of extra cash, usually cash only, not doing any kind of, you know, real accounting or declaration, you know, declaring what they're earning to the government, right? It's more of not like, that was very Australian, not like, it's very like, I don't know how to describe it, but you just, it's a side hustle. That's the best way to put it, right? But some people do make a living out of doing it. And even some content creators do that as part of their content. Now, I wanna be very clear. If you're in Japan and you're doing exactly what I'm describing, don't hate on me. Please just look at what I'm doing as trying to help you. I'm gonna give you a list of things that you need to do to be legitimate, official, and make sure you're never gonna be in a position where you're gonna lose your customer's cars. You're going to lose all your income and you're gonna end up in jail and deported from Japan. These are all things that have actually happened recently to some fake exporters. Let's go through the list of what you need to do to actually be able to export a car out of Japan and sell cars in Japan. First thing is you need a registered business. Now, pause right here. If you were purchasing a car from Japan, the first thing you should do before you send any money to anyone is check if they are a real registered company. You can do this two ways, and I recommend you use this these two ways every single time. First, ask them for proof of business. They should send you a certificate or documentation with some stamps on it that says that they are a real registered company in Japan. If they don't show that to you or they feel uncomfortable showing that to you, which makes no sense because technically you are supposed to have that like up on display in your business. If they don't wanna show that to you, that's fine. What you can do is I have a link in the description to how to search the business registry in Japan. That is updated weekly. So if a company is registered and created and they give you their company Company name and you can't find it there, they're not a real business, they're not paying tax, no business insurance will exist for them. Wherever they are storing their car, there is no coverage, no insurance, no nothing, because even if they are going through a friend who has rented that land or property for them and they have insurance on that land, the insurance company will straight away go, please prove to me that these cars are your customers or your business's cars. And unless they have a paper trail and proof that those cars are their cars, like their customers' cars, then the insurance company will not cover anything. And this has happened as well. Cars have been stolen, fires have broken out, um, natural disasters, Japan's massive for earthquakes, um, typhoons, um, worst case scenario, tsunamis. If any of this goes through where all the cheap warehouses are that I know of, that people are storing cars, if any of that stuff happens and there's no real registered company with registered business insurance, you're losing your car. And they're not gonna refund you because they're gonna be like, oh, this was a, you know, a natural disaster. That's not on me. Or a fire broke out or someone stole your car. Sorry, bro. That's how that's gonna go down. Insurance companies will not cover that if it's through a friend of a friend and there's no proof of purchase, right? There is no way to legitimately get business insurance unless it is through the business that you are operating as and sold the car under or anything like that, right? Like that's just how it rolls. So first of all, if you're buying a car and getting it stored here in Japan, make sure you check their real registered business. And the second thing I would, I would recommend you do is check and ask for proof of business insurance for your investment. Make sure that your 100 or 200 or $300,000, you know, V-Spec um 34 GTR, which is actually more like 500K now, make sure that that company has business insurance. And it, like, to be honest, if you're sending them that kind of money overseas, they, they would have no problem showing you proof of all of that. But it's also up to you to make sure that you check that. So you can register any company name. If you see anyone who's selling cars on Facebook Marketplace, claiming that they're an exporter from Japan to sell Japanese cars, 
You can ask them for their company name and proof and you can search all of that online. It's super easy. Got the link down in the description of where you can search company names. Moving past this, there's now one other thing that before you can even sell anything in Japan that is a used item, used good, whether it's a car, whether it's a PlayStation, there is a particular certification that you need where you register at the police and the government that says that you're selling something that is a used item. Cars and all that are included. Now specifically for selling any kind of car in Japan, whether it is leaving the country or staying in the country, the document is called a Kobutsu Sho Kyoka. If they don't have that and they can't show you proof of that, they're not allowed to legally sell anything in Japan that is used. All right, so that's the second thing. Then kind of comes the rest of it. So if they are a real registered company and they have that, then they're not gonna be overcharging you for a car. When I say that, I mean that once again, you gotta realize these are scalpers. They're trying to buy cars cheap and sell them for big money. Now, right now, everyone's kind of clued on that these cars are worth a lot of money. So the kind of value of what they're selling for locally in Japan is now pretty high. So let's say there's a 34 GTST. It's in pretty good condition. It's done about 120,000 kilometers. Locally, kind of wholesale level price, just being completely honest, anywhere from th two to three million yen is pretty standard for that. Can we just quickly put this in Google? Let's just put in, you know, two million yen. That's $13,782 USD, right? Now let's say it's 3 million yen or 3.5. Let's say it's a little bit more expensive because it's really nice, right? So let's go 3 million yen is 20,000 USD and 3.5 million yen is 24,000 USD. So this is how much the local market is roughly for like a GTT turbo rear wheel drive 34 Skyline. Moving from there, these guys who are fake exporters are going to be like, oh, 50 grand USD for this car. And that's fine, anyone can set whatever price they want. That's okay. But what's really interesting is the real exporters, they're only adding generally their fees on top of the wholesale price and letting it ship out of the country right away. Or they're storing it and waiting to then cash in. And when I say cash in, that's because real exporters make their money on quantity. And what I mean by that is how many cars they export out of the country. I don't wanna come across biased whatsoever and full disclosure, I do work with B Ford, which is Japan's biggest car exporter. But I also have a lot of friends that are exporters and stuff like that, that are legitimate exporters. It just comes down to, I, I know the business as well myself because when I first moved here, I did pursue becoming an exporter and I did export a fair few cars to Australia. At the end of the day, I've just seen so many people being taken advantage of and no one's really put this information out there. So that's kind of why I'm sharing it. And once again, I do apologize to anyone in the business if you do not like this video because I'm putting all this info out there, but it is readily available and it is all easy to research and find yourself. So when I say an exporter makes their money by quantity, it's because every single car that they export out of the country, they get 10% back of the sale of that. They get the tax back, fully refunded to them by the government. Your $500,000 V-Spec, 10% of that, the exporter gets to keep. Even if he jacked up the price as well, he gets to keep that. But what's really interesting is you don't get the refund from the government on all the cars you're exporting unless you're a real registered business, unless you're paying tax. So it's really interesting. Uh, being an exporter in Japan is actually really amazing because you get to get these huge refund checks from the government. And it's actually just to give you a, a little bit of an insight into business, we're also technically at Semit HQ um, classified as an exporter because most of our sales with the merch store are all shipped overseas and exported out of the country. So anything you export out of Japan as a business, you get the refund back to you of what the tax or the value, of, you know, the, the tax of the original sale price, if that makes sense. So when people say at auctions, oh yeah, we bought this car from auction, there's auction fees, and then they add their like thousand dollar, you know, cover charge on top for finding the car, and inspecting it for you, and all that type of thing. Auction fees includes the tax of the car, and that gets fully refunded to the exporter when the car leaves the country. So if you're a genuine exporter, you're just trying to push out cars, you're just the middleman helping people get their dream cars, right? You don't care about making bank. But when it comes to these scalpers, they're not getting that 10% refund. 
They're not getting anything when they export the car. In fact, the person that they normally go through to export the car for them, they're getting that money back. And what's really interesting is all these fake exporters are so focused on never paying tax and not getting caught by the Japanese government, they don't have real business bank accounts or bank accounts in Japan that the money's being transferred to. They're getting them transferred to their accounts in the USA or other countries and stuff that they're from. They're not even in the country under real proper business visas or anything like that, right? It's all just a massive tax fraud situation waiting to be exposed. And when it does, which we've seen recently, someone got arrested, their cars were seized and they're in jail and the whole situation sorted out and all their customers probably don't even, half of them probably don't even know that their cars have been seized as essentially payment for tax fraud. And uh, that's gonna be ongoing. But all of these things are gonna start coming up and being more and more common. These issues are gonna start happening more and more. People are gonna think that they had a car in storage that never even existed because probably they weren't even a real exporter to begin with. A lot of scammers, a lot of scalpers, and a lot of people are taking advantage of this market because it blew up so suddenly and so quickly. Yeah, that's kind of, I guess, everything um, that you need to know. But yeah, these, these essentially, Fake exporters are making their money by jacking up the prices of these cars. Their marketing and sales campaigns are FOMO based, fear of missing out, which is straight up like, these prices aren't gonna last forever. The market's just gonna keep going up. Don't miss out. This could be, this is your only opportunity to buy this car. I marked it down by two grand. I marked it down by this amount. Or this car just sold, that car just sold, and that car just sold. And a lot of these dealers and or fake exporters are literally just selling their cars to other dealers in Japan for like the same amount that they bought the cars for or a little bit over just to make it look like they're moving stock as well. So just be really safe out there. These guys are only making their money from what they are selling the car to you for. So do a bit of research and you'll probably find that a lot of these cars that these fake exporters are selling are actually marked up by 20 to like $20,000 on top of what they actually are selling for base rate here in Japan and what other dealers and exporters are selling them for. So be very, very diligent. Check if they're a registered business. Ask for proof of business insurance. Some common red flags are if they're asking you to transfer to an American bank account, unless they're a really big established dealership slash exporter importer. Um, and I'm not affiliated with these companies, but like Top Rank would be one of them because they have a USA base and a Japan base. Craft Sports as well has got a USA and a, a Japan base. So like big established companies where they have all this information on their website that you can just look at their full proof of registration, right? Those companies would be probably fine with you transferring payment for these cars into USA bank accounts. Any other kind of company, first that's a red flag and you should make sure that they're a real company and they're not trying to uh, avoid paying tax in Japan. Cash only sales and stuff like that doesn't really happen to be honest with real established businesses because they need a paper trail. Yeah, you sure they'll probably let you pay in cash, but that can raise flags. And um, generally anyone who is a foreigner living in Japan who's doing this kind of business, they generally always wanna be squeaky clean because it's our livelihood. People that are invested in living here full time, like me, I got a wife, I got a kid, I got family over here. I wanna stay here full time. I have this whole entire business and, and life that I've created here. I don't wanna be doing anything dodgy. And anyone who else is legitimate, it feels the same way. They don't wanna put their visa on the line. So at the end of the day, um, generally, a lot of legitimate places don't prefer you to pay cash. Um, I hope this was, not too much information. Some links down in the description to help you guys search for registered companies. Please, please don't get taken advantage of. I hate seeing it on the internet and I see it time and time again. And it really upsets me because I am very close to the situation in the sense of, um, you know, we've all been taken advantage of, I think, in the car community. We've all seen our dream car, seen it cheaper than usual, knowing that it's probably too good to be true, but we still are so drawn to it because it's our dream chassis or something we've always dreamed about building. And we buy the car and then later feel, realize it wasn't what we thought it was. And then it crushes our dream of ever owning that car again and leaves a bad taste in our mouth. And then we never get back into cars again. And I hate that. I hate that. Hope this was a lot of information. Once again, if you are an exporter and you are doing things non-legitimately in Japan, I urge you to do it legitimately. Um, if you do do it legitimately, it just means better things for you. Your visas will get all of a sudden bumped up to five year visas. The Japanese government will heavily favor you if they see you paying tax. So if you're paying tax and you're earning an income and you have your business income and everything all declared, you'll get permanent residency in within a year. Like it is crazy how much the Japanese government will look after you and favor you as a foreigner and banks and companies will actually give you like credit cards with more than like only a thousand dollars on them as a limit. Like you can actually get a bank loan. You can actually buy a house. You can actually do everything if 
you do things properly, pay tax and declare them. To be honest, if you're an exporting company and you're exporting cars out of Japan, you won't be paying tax. You'll actually be getting money back from the government and it'll create a positive cash flow and you'll actually end up never paying tax if you do your books correctly. So if your exports are always happening, you're never paying tax really. So yeah, I don't know why more people don't do it, um, but yeah, be very careful out there guys. You're the ones purchasing the cars and you're the ones that are gonna lose if this goes down. This person, or let's say you buy a car through a fake exporter, what's gonna to happen to them if they get arrested and they get caught and your car gets seized? Like there's no proof, there's no paperwork, there's no evidence that that car is physically yours on paper. There's no legitimate way of knowing to the Japanese government that's your, that that's your property. Even screenshots could be photoshopped of chats between him and them. At the end of the day, you guys are the ones that they're gonna miss out and I do not wanna ever see this happen again. So I hope this information finds you well. I know it's a lot of talking. Like, comment, share, subscribe if you wanna see, if you want more information in this in depth, if you want me to interview some uh, exporters that are legitimate that actually want to um, open up more about this, let me know. I'm happy to actually, let's do a Zoom call. Let's throw in competitors all in the same room of legitimate guys and just talk about this. I think it's a topic that needs a lot more uh, light shined on it. So be careful out there. There's a lot of fake exporters in Japan pretending to be companies that they aren't. The best tool that I can give you is that link in the description. Use it, search real company names. Um, you can search my company name and you'll see that we're a registered legitimate company. I strongly urge you to do it. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Stay classy, San Diego.